Welcome back to the UEFA Champions League. We look ahead to the new season with reigning champions Real Madrid. Fernando Torres reflects on an emotional night in Milan last May. And the Russian history makers, FC Rostov, at the start of a brand new journey. Ahead of the new UEFA Champions League season, the continent's biggest clubs and greatest players gathered in the Principality of Monaco for the group stage draw. As well as the draw, the UEFA Best Player and Best Women's Player in Europe awards would also be announced. This is the reason I came to play in the Champions League, to win, to win the Champions League to win trophies. It had a bit of everything. We were able to win the Champions League and on a personal level, I was also the top scorer in the competition. So it was possibly one of the best years of my career. It's been a long, hard season. We, we fought until the death and, um, yeah, obviously it was a very difficult game in the final against Atletico Madrid, but, uh, yeah, we kept going, we kept fighting and um, ultimately got, got the prize that we wanted. After 120 minutes in the 125th match of the season, the most prestigious prize in European football came down to one moment. And it would belong to Cristiano Ronaldo. Obviously, your heart always beats a bit quicker, actually much quicker than normal when you take a penalty, especially when it's a decisive one. But I was confident that I would score and that I would seal victory for Real Madrid. European football's most decorated club had won La Undecima. When you lift that trophy, that's when you can really enjoy the moment. To win two in three years is, is an amazing achievement, but... Um, yeah, we know this club, we know how hungry we are for Champions Leagues. We've won two, but now we want to look on to the next one and um, we'll be fully concentrated on doing that this season. Like Bale, it was coach Zinedine Zidane's second Champions League triumph, 14 years after his glorious winner for Los Blancos against Bayer Leverkusen. Zizou became just the seventh winner as a player and coach. Zidane was key for our season. He arrived. He made the team work hard. He worked well with us. He's a great professional, a great person, and in my opinion, his biggest quality is his ability to give his players a sense of calm. And what more could you ask from a coach than to win the Champions League just six months after arriving? Zidane deserves a lot of credit, and I'm very happy that he's with us. And the French coach didn't have to wait long for his second chance of silverware. The Lerkendal Stadion in Trondheim, Norway, played host to the 2016 UEFA Super Cup between Real Madrid and Sevilla. With Ronaldo and Bale absent, it was a chance for some of Real's aspiring stars. 20-year-old Marco Asensio duly delivered. His sublime curling shot in his first European match gave Real the lead. But Franco Vazquez levelled for the UEFA Europa League champions just before half-time. And with 18 minutes left, Sergio Ramos tripped Vitolo. Yefen Konoplyanka converted the penalty. 2-1 Sevilla. But Captain Ramos atoned, heading home in the final seconds to send the match to extra time. With Sevilla losing Timotej Kolodziczak to a second yellow card, Madrid poured forward, and just when the game looked destined for penalties, a moment of brilliance from Danny Carvajal settled the contest. Another trophy for Real Madrid. Zidane has a settled squad, as Real aimed to become the first club since AC Milan in 1990 to retain this trophy. And with the 2017 final in Cardiff, Gareth Bale has an extra incentive. I remember obviously winning the first Champions League, the, the Super Cup was in Cardiff, so it was an amazing moment for me personally then to be playing in my hometown, but to have the Champions League final uh, this season is, uh, 
is even a bigger motivation if there is any to, to get to the final and win it again. Playing for the best club in the world, Real Madrid, our ambition is always to win Champions Leagues, league titles and every competition we contest. Obviously the Champions League is a trophy that means the most to Real Madrid, they've won it more than anyone else and it's always an important competition. It's special for me, it's special for Real Madrid, so we will try to win it again this year. Real Madrid. The 11-time champions of Europe will face Borussia Dortmund, Polish champions Legia Warsaw and Cristiano Ronaldo's first professional club, Sporting. It's an important moment for all of us. It's a special moment. Cristiano Ronaldo is a product of Sporting. He's an icon for Portugal and for the club too. I miss being at home, and I've rekindled my enthusiasm for the little things. Like coming to the training ground I've been coming to since I was 10 years old, where I know everyone, where I feel respected and important. I missed getting to play the Calderon in front of the fans I used to sit alongside, hearing the songs that I used to sing myself, and which now I have the chance to hear from the pitch. It's not always easy to find motivation, but this is the only club in the world where I don't have to look for it. I find it in every corner, together with my memories. Ahead of the 2016 UEFA Champions League final, Fernando Torres, an Atletico Madrid supporter from the age of five, who'd rejoined the club in 2015, was looking forward to the game of his life. There's not much to say when a dressing room is hurting. A final is a final and you've got to win. Few people remember who the losing finalists were. They only remember the champions. It's irrelevant who they were up against. This is the third time we've been in a similar situation and we can't seem to manage to go all the way. You must take the good things and apply them to what's ahead. We'll stay true to our philosophy, like I learned when I first came here at the age of 10. When you fall down, you have to get back up and keep trying again and again forever. I think we should be optimistic about the future. The last few years has been the beginning of something big. I've had 18 months of happiness back home, feeling respected, loved and admired by teammates and fans. I approach things with the philosophy that every season might be my last here. I've savoured every training session, every match, the Calderon, the fans. One day it will come to an end and I don't know when that will be. I want to be loved by my fans and my people. And in the future, when I stop playing football, I hope to have earned the respect of all supporters. I think that I've always conducted myself respectfully towards everyone, and that will always be the case. As Atletico attempt to lift this trophy for the first time, they'll start in Group D with last season's semi-final opponents, FC Bayern Munich, Dutch champions PSV Eindhoven and Russian debutants FC Rostov. Still to come, we tell the incredible story of FC Rostov ahead of their first UEFA Champions League game. Rostov of Russia. 
will play in the Champions League for the very first time. This is our story. FC Rostov, a club that's seen a remarkable upturn in fortunes. Fifteen months ago, they won a playoff to avoid relegation. Last season, they finished second in the Russian Premier League. And now Europe's premier club competition awaits them. Korban Bedyev was the man who began this stunning turnaround until he unexpectedly stepped down in the summer, leaving the responsibilities to former player Dmitry Kirichenko. It was very difficult, especially at the beginning. A lot of the players had doubts psychologically because it was such a shock for them that Kurban Berdyev had walked out. But the lads still have a job to do on the pitch, and thankfully this situation hasn't had too much of an effect on them. It's the first time he's been a head coach. Not so long ago, we were teammates, but we're all professionals, and we respect him. And you can see the progress he's made. He's growing as a coach, and I can only say positive things about him. Kirichenko has continued the good work of his predecessor. After a 1-1 draw in the first leg of their UEFA Champions League playoff against Ajax in Amsterdam, Fans arrived in hope, ahead of the return in Rostov-on-Don. We defeated Ajax, four-time winners of this competition. A man of the match performance from Alexander Erokin helped FC Rostov to a 5-2 aggregate victory. An historic night that will live long in the memory. I'm glad it happened in our own city, in front of our own supporters, in our home stadium. You could say it made us twice as happy. It's the first time in my life that I've experienced such a meaningful event. It's difficult to describe the emotions in words. After finishing in second place in the league last season, this is the happiest moment for us. Obviously, we'll try to keep progressing. This is just the beginning. For me, it was an incredibly beautiful and emotional moment for the players and coaches, especially as they're not superstars who play in the Champions League every year. In their debut season, FC Rostov will face European giants Bayern and Atletico and former champions PSV. The next step on an incredible journey. I've got mixed feelings because I'm not sure it's completely sunk in that on September the 13th we're going to Munich to play Bayern. But I hope before then we'll have time to think it over again and get ready mentally because physically we're well prepared. You can feel the atmosphere in the city. All the fans are happy and there's been a lot of celebrations. Everyone understands that the fact such great teams are going to be coming here is fantastic for our club. And together, we're all looking forward to these games. Patience. Faith of the fans. Determination. We fight for the name of the city. In this season's other playoffs by the league route, Porto convincingly defeated Roma. After being held to a one-all draw in Portugal, they struck first in the return through Felipe. Roma then had two players sent off and Porto took full advantage. Jesus Corona crowned a 3-0 win on the night and safe passage to the group stage. After falling at this hurdle last year, 2015 quarter-finalist Monaco recorded an impressive victory over Villarreal. Following a 2-1 win in the first leg, Fabinho scored the only goal at Stade Louis Dirk. Pep Guardiola's Manchester City made smooth progress through to the group stage after disposing of Stour Bucharest. A 5-0 win in the Romanian capital effectively ended the tie. Fabian Delft scored the only goal in the return fixture. There were hat-tricks for both Torgan Azar and Raphael as Borussia Mönchengladbach outclassed young boys to comfortably qualify. Already 3-1 up from the away leg, Gladbach were rampant. A hugely impressive performance from Di Follen, 9-2 on aggregate, the biggest ever margin of victory in a playoff tie.
Celtic survived the scare against a spirited Hapoel Beersheba, leading 5-2 after the first leg. The hoops went 1-0 down in the 21st minute. Ovidio Hoban doubled Hapoel's lead after the break, but Brendan Rodgers' side held on. Celtic back in the group stage after a two-year absence. Bulgarian champions Ludogorets reached the group stage for the second time with a 4-2 aggregate win over Victoria Plzeň, leading 2-0 from the first leg. Klaviu Kesheru's stunning goal sealed their progress. Copenhagen needed a late second leg goal to defeat Apoel. The Cypriot champions had drawn level on aggregates in the 69th minute to Piros Soteru. But Federico Santander beat Boy Wasserman at his near post in the 86th minute to send the Danish champions into the group stage for the fourth time. 1-1 after their first leg, Salzburg were just five minutes from the group stage when Junior Fernandez struck for Dinamo Zagreb to take the tie to extra time. And as he did in the playoffs last season, El Arabi Hilal Sudani was Dinamo's star, taking them through to the group stage for the second successive season. I was born in Warsaw, but grew up 40 kilometers away, in Tviatsa Modlin. There, everyone supports Legia Warsaw. When I was a boy, I never thought I'd be able to play for Legia Warsaw and seal qualification for the UEFA Champions League. I couldn't have imagined this in my wildest dreams. I don't remember Legia in the Champions League. I was only four back then, and I was only five the last time a Polish team took part in the Champions League. For forward Michał Kurasik and everyone connected with Legia Warsaw, reaching the UEFA Champions League group stage is an achievement that will be savoured. It's been 21 years since they last qualified for this stage of the competition. In the playoffs, the 11 time champions of Poland overcame Irish side Dundalk, who were themselves looking to return to the competition for the first time since 1991. A standout performer during Legia's qualifying campaign was 28 year old Hungarian striker Nemanja Nikolic, who scored five goals in six games, including a penalty in the 2 0 first leg victory in Dublin. It's been a special year for us, with the club also celebrating its 100th anniversary. Everyone expected us to be crowned champions again, and everyone in Warsaw expected us to win the cup too. But as I said before, reaching the Champions League was a dream for us. I want to emphasize that our goal was to make the Europa League. The Champions League was just a dream. So I'm delighted that this dream has come true, and we're in the group stage. Ahead of the second leg in Warsaw, Legia's fans were at their passionate and vociferous best. The job of guiding the team past the Irish champions and into the group stage fell to new coach, Besnik Hassi. And despite trailing Dundalk for much of the game, victory was finally secured by Kuhacic, whose injury time goal sealed a 3-1 aggregate win, sending the club he supported all his life back into the UEFA Champions League. Reaching the group stage means that this season is already a success. As for the Polish league, our goal is clear. If we want to qualify for the Champions League again, we must defend our title. After many years of hard work, we've now got the chance to play against the best. And as Legia Warsaw prepare for their first appearance for 21 years, their form in the Polish capital will be crucial. They're drawn in Group F alongside reigning champions Real Madrid, as well as Borussia Dortmund and Sporting. Everybody knows what kind of atmosphere the Legia fans can create. We know that they will always support us, and that's a huge boost for us. So I'm sure that the three games we're going to play here in the group stage will be a great experience for the players and our fans. And I hope we will be able to get as many points as possible.
Back in Monaco for the group stage draw, and five times champions of Europe, Barcelona will face Manchester City. Pep Guardiola will return to camp now with the English side on match day three. Also in Group C, Scottish champion Celtic and German side Borussia Mönchengladbach. In Group G, English champions Leicester City in their first season in the competition face FC Copenhagen, Club Brugge and FC Porto. Well, uh, you know, this time last year we'd come off a, a great uh, recovery and um, I think that was really the starting point of our season last year and uh, we're delighted to, to be here. Uh, we're, we're very uh, proud of what the achievement uh, the club made last year and, uh, and certainly looking forward to the season ahead. In Group A, it's Arsenal, PSG, FC Basel and Ludogorets. And in Group H, UEFA Europa League champion Sevilla are drawn against Juventus, Lyon and Dinamo Zagreb. After the draw, attention turned to the UEFA Best Player in Europe awards. Arda Hegerberg won the women's trophy. The Norwegian striker was the top goal scorer in the 2015-16 UEFA Women's Champions League as Lyon secured a third European crown. The men's award, voted for by 55 journalists, selected the star of the 2015-16 season. Cristiano Ronaldo, Gareth Bale and Antoine Griezmann were the contenders and Ronaldo, who lifted the Champions League and UEFA Euro trophies, was named UEFA Best Player in Europe for the second time. It's a huge honour to be best player in Europe this season. I want to thank my teammates at Real Madrid and with the national team too, because of course without them, we can't win individual trophies. Next week, UEFA Europa League champions for the last three seasons. It's all change at Sevilla.